3.2.1b, we're going to be graphing a system of two-dimensional inequalities. And so today's objective, we're going to graph system of inequalities, two dimensions. So when we graph two-dimensional inequalities, there will always exist both the x and the y. So that means that we're going to put everything on that coordinate plane. So that means when we shade, or when we're trying to map the region, it's going to be like, it just won't be a two dimensional or one dimensional line in which we're shading on the line. We're actually gonna be going through and shading on a region. And so let's go through and we can graph this. The, we're just gonna start with the basics. We've probably seen graphing linear inequalities like this before. Just as a quick reminder, so here's my y-intercept. My y-intercept is at three. And so from three, now I can model and graph my slope. My slope is one. So it's gonna be up one over one, up one over one. And because right here, there's no equal to, well, the way that we model when there's not an equal to is gonna be through a dotted or dashed line. Solid if it's allowed to equal it. And so now I have to graph. So, or I have to represent like the region per se that makes it true or false. Now to do that, we're gonna test a point. So if you remember in the previous examples where we went through and we picked a value on either side of the number line, well, it's not a number line anymore. It's an actual two dimensional space. And so I can pick any point on this two dimensional space to test to see if it's going to be true or false. So for example, I could test this value right here, like zero, zero. It's typically the easiest to pick zero, zero. The only time that you can't pick zero, zero is if the line or the shape actually passes through that value. And so I plug zero, zero into my graph here and see if it's true or false. And so zero is less than zero plus three, zero is less than three, that's true. So that means that region, everything on this side of that dashed line is gonna be true, and so we shade the side that's true. And so that's going to be my answer. And so you're gonna see this pattern. We're gonna graph the inequality, pretending that it's an equal sign, so we have to know what the shape is, and so in this instance it was a line. Dotted or dashed, right? So step two, that means it's gonna be uh, dotted or dashed, because there was not an equal to. If there is equal to, it's gonna be a solid line. And then I could pick any point on this region and test it. And so I tested zero, 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 zero on this side happens to be true. And so I shaded that side. Let's look at the next example. So the first thing is I wanna graph it and pretend like this is an equal sign. Well, this is a parabola. Here's my H, here's my K. So it's gonna move over two spaces and up three. And it's gonna have that parabola shape. And I kind of sketched it, right? So if I plugged in uh, three, okay, it's gonna give me four. If I plug in one, two, three, four, if I plug in four, right, it's gonna be up there. And so I kind of graphed it. And I did a solid line. So step two, I did a solid line because it says equal to. And so now I need to pick a point and test it. I'll pick zero, zero again. And so if I plug in zero for my Y and zero for my X, I want to see if this is true. So negative two squared, that's going to give me four. Four plus three is seven, that's true. So zero is less than or equal to seven. There we go. And so because this was true, that represents every single value here. And so that entire shaded region there is going to be true. Now, graphing a system of inequalities just means that we have to graph multiple different equations. And before, when we had a system of equations, we looked at that where the points intersected. Well, now because it's a system of inequalities, it's no longer a point, it's where the regions are going to intersect. And so we're gonna have multiple instances of graphing and our answer or solution is going to be where, they inter where the regions overlap. So for this one right here, because y isn't by itself, you could, 
if you wanted to, you know, subtract the x and subtract the x to get it by itself, and then this you'd have to divide by a negative. But in this method, we can just graph the intercepts. So meaning, if I wanted to say, like, what's my x-intercept? Oh, well, my x-intercept means my y is 0. Well, if my y is 0, I get x equals 4. And so then I could put a dot on 4. I can do, well, what's my y-intercept? Well, I plug in 0 for x, and so my y is 4. And then now I can connect those two, and it's going to be a solid line. Now I have to test. And so to test, I can pick 0, 0. And if I plug in 0, 0, I get 0 is less than 4. That's true. So I'm going to shade that side because it's true. So now graphing the other one. Well, uh, if I want to find the x-intercept, plug in 0 for y. So I get x is 2. If I wanted to find the y-intercept, plug in 0 for x. And I'm gonna, if I divide both sides by negative, I get y is negative 2. And so solid line, I can connect those. And so now I need to test. Pick 0, 0 again. So if I plug in 0, 0, 0 minus 0, well, that's 0 is greater than or equal to 2. That's false. So that means that this side is false, which I'm allowed to now assume that this side is true. And so shade that side. Now my answer, or the solution, is going to be where those regions intersect. And so because they intersect here, that's going to be my solution. So we get one more example. So in this instance, for this first one right here, here's my h, and it's going to be a parabola because of the square. And so my h was 4, and so it's going to shift over 4 spaces, and so I have that. Now to test, if I plug in 0, 0, 0 minus 4 squared, I get 16. So 16 is less than 4, or is it less than 0. That's false. And so because this entire region here is false, this has to now be true. And so I can shade that. And so now graphing the next, well, looking at this here, that's an absolute value. And so the absolute value, and then up. So it's, you know, that's the shape of the absolute value, right? It's that V shape. And then now that's a negative, so I know it's going to go down. My h is 4 and my k is 3. And so now, graphing my h and k, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Okay, I know it's going to do that, but it's going to go down instead. And you can plot values, you know, to get those other values. Solid, not dashed, not dashed. So that's why there are solid lines. Once again, I need to test. This line, it does not cross 0, 0, so that makes that a little easier. And so because it doesn't cross 0, 0, I can test it. And so testing 0, 0, let's plug that in. So I'm going to get negative 4 plus 3, I get negative 1 is greater than or equal to 0. That is false. So because if I test it on this side, right, that's everything over here, right, if that line goes all the way through, that's everything here. That's false. That means this other side must be true. And so the region in which they intersect or overlap is right here. And so that's going to be my solution. So to close today's lesson, we learned how to graph two-dimensional inequalities. Now, the difference between a system of inequalities and a system of equations, the system of equations, we're looking at where our graphs intersect with a system of inequalities, we're basically looking at where the regions overlap or where the regions intersect. So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.